Um, dude, so we were talking about AI tuning for cars. I had a feeling that was going to come up. Well, because I talked about it with, like, every time I've brought it up with somebody, they're like, oh, no, it's not going to happen. I'm like, okay, you just don't see, like, what's going I, on. I definitely think it's going to And then happen. when I said it to you, you were like, oh, yeah, it's coming. I was like, finally, somebody that, like, <laughs> I can actually have a conversation about with this because everybody else that I talk to is like, it doesn't make any sense. That wouldn't happen. But if you can give something enough data logs to know what's good and bad, I feel like it could very efficiently do that. Yeah, I mean, the AI stuff's proving that it can be very useful. And it, yeah, when it comes to, it's one, like, they're trying, right now, they're trying to make AI control, like, emotion and human response and feel like a real person you're talking to, this and that. But when it comes to just tuning numbers and data, yeah, and if it can go back and, um, you know, just build up a database of what works and what doesn't and where things should be and where they shouldn't be, then I don't see that they can't, I don't see why they couldn't implement that into tuning software. Yeah, if you have enough data points on your car, like something like Mullet has a ton of data points, drive shaft, you know, everything, like it can have like all kinds of things that my car doesn't have, you know, shock sensors and like all every wheel speed, traction controls and stuff like that. Like once you have enough data to give it, I mean, there's no reason why it can't interpret that data a thousand times faster than any tuner. Yeah, no, and it will do it to the best of its cloud of knowledge of what works best. Because, mm -hmm. like, AI is just, uh, like, chat GPT is just a, it's just our collective information mm -hmm. on the internet everywhere, and it just browses that, scans it for the best answer, essentially. So if you're saying, my shocks did this on this pass, where, where how should we tune the suspension to, I mean, that's more of a physical thing that yeah, they but would if have it to could tell you to do. Tell but, you what to do, yeah, because they yeah, might it have should, to. It should say, well, based on these, you know, thousands of other people that are also using the soft, because it's going to take a lot of people using it to make it work. Yeah. If one person uses it, it's not going to know what to do. But if it has a collective kind of cloud, and that's where the issue could come into where people don't want to share their secrets and stuff yeah. like that. But if they let everyone share what works best, and then build a software off that. Well, that's tuning where everything. That's where like one tuner in particular that maybe tunes a lot of, you know, LS Fox bodies. He can compile all of his data into like a personal, basically network for his own tuning. And when he uploads a tune, it could kind of scan every other data log. It knows all the other data, and it could kind of pinpoint to get to the best example based on his own experience and then you have your own like proprietary deal going instead of like an open source to anyone yeah and i mean even if even if it wasn't even if it didn't have to be smart to make the decisions for you it could just be a tool to where it says when i'm in boost at these boost levels i just want it to see this afr the whole time and you floor it, and in real time, I mean, just in a couple of pulls, it can just sit there and scramble all mm -hmm. the numbers for you in real time and reach your target. Even though if it's the number you want, it might not be the best, but you tell it, yeah. make it, make the car run like this at this RPM, and it can just do it for you way quicker and more efficiently. Well, especially if it's reading like small things like, you know, um, transmission converter pressure and things like that, and then also like has things like coolant pressure, so like it can know the health of the engine, and then you have like crankcase pressure, but it's also would be sampling from your first dyno pole and what that did versus current and how different it is. And like even like the Coyote guys, they, they know, they measure their chains and they can know the stretch on the chain when to replace it. So they, they check like their first pass and the chains were this stretched. And then they can check like their current passes and know how much they've stretched to when to replace them before they break. Hmm. So like there's things like that that you, as a person, like you may not pick up on that because you're not going to look at that all the time. Yeah. But like this, like a good tuner assistant, I guess you could say, would find that out because I mean, instantly. It's, it's already kind of on that path because I mean, even in like Holly or the fuel techs right now, when you. You like close loop, even yeah, or halt tech, all of them. Yeah, you run the wide band and you have the computer correcting for you on the fly. But if you just have 
a system to where it's also not only just correcting, but then going in and making those changes for you mm -hmm. on the fly and giving you just the best possible tune. I would imagine at Fuel Tech they're looking into it pretty good. Yeah, Anderson said that they've thought about it. I don't know how deep they've dove into it, but... Yeah, that would be a cool one to hear from somebody that, I think, like him. Yeah, if, really if drag knows. racing continues to go on for, you know, years to come, then I think it's inevitable that, you know, company, especially like them, they're getting a lot of traction. They're going to always push mm -hmm. to innovate the next thing that one of them's going to find a way to incorporate AI with it because that's what every company is doing right now is finding out how AI can help streamline their efficiency and make things just work better. If anything, it would probably start in like a Formula One or a NASCAR where they have, yeah, you know, that's probably some five hundred million dollars a year. Yeah, us home built guys, we're just gonna get the freaking yeah the scraps of what's left of that. But because if you look at like all, they're gonna get all the good shit. Yeah, because if you look at like Formula One technology, exactly. that stuff is insanely yeah, high. Forget level. the drag racing. Yeah, you look at Formula One if they can start scrunching numbers after every lap and they see what was our best lap. Well, they're and live. They're live tuning. In the yeah, cars. I'm sure they got it down. Even already. NASCAR is live connected to the cars and making adjustments as it goes. Yeah, like in real time? Yeah, in real time. Yeah, once you get AI doing that. Way quicker than any it's freaking guy be, on a laptop can do it. Yeah. I think they use, they used to, they They're used like a McLaren I'm sure, ECU. I'm sure they're already in, like working on it right now. I wouldn't be surprised. The first early adopters are going to be the ones that really shine with it. So like Mercedes may already have it but they're keeping it quiet because you don't want Red Bull to get it <laughs> yeah. and start using it. So yeah, if there's a way to monitor like the tire temps and the fuel level and you know that that's changing the weight of the car by this or the traction yeah. percentage by this, then the car is just sitting there just... And you could have 50 tuners. The perfect tune, as yeah. close as you can make an internal combustion engine just That'll be really fast. cool. Like, I feel like there's so much streamlining that could happen on some of these cars that they could run way better than they are running now. Nothing against tuners like, you know, they're, I mean, I already have Alpha at induction. He's technically AI. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's, I mean, you'll, I don't know if he's going to mess with your car at all. I think we're going to bring it over there, yeah, once it's done. You'll realize, I mean, he he's very similar to a computer, the way that he That's works. That's kind of how Anderson is like at Fuel Tech. He's He's a computer. He just. I think that's how tuners tuners usually they are. They just know, just know formulas and uh, conversions like right away. Mm -hmm. Just oh, I need to convert this to this, and he just whips up a little computer. Like when we brought my MR2 there, based like it was on a no tune in the car, basically just enough to get it running. He just went through like what injectors, what fuel, how much power are we trying to make mm -hmm. this and this, and we just plugged in stuff, and within two or three pools, it made like the fourteen hundred or whatever it was, or at that time it was like eleven hundred, but yeah. it was just like nothing. That's so wild. That's such like a different brain than it's, I have that tuners have. Yeah. Like they just built, like they just put the numbers in for what it should theoretically do. And it, you know, it mm -hmm. performed. It wasn't the the trial and error phase like I'm used to where, you know, it's breaking up, sputtering, like, oh, let's add a little fuel in this spot. It's mm -hmm. like, no, they, they calculated out the whole table before it even, you know, was a thing. Yeah.